All right, Range Rover Classic VM engines. It continues. So we've got the car in France, picture on the screen, and we bought it with a blown engine or suspect blown engine, and indeed it was blown. Um, and it's the 2.4 VM engine, which stands for VM Motori, which is an Italian company that made engines for boats, and they supplied those for Range Rover for the early Range Rover Classics. And it was that the original one was 2.4, and they did a massive power boost to 2.5. But on the 2.5, some things changed, and I'll go through some of the changes. So this is the vacuum pump here, which was on top of the engine, driven by the timing gear, and that generated your vacuum for your brake servo. Nothing wrong with that. Um, and this was the fan belt. So as well as having the extra 100 cc, they did also make some changes and and you'll notice as we go and look at this 2.5 engine here that i've got on the back of the pickup you'll notice they've gone to like a multi groove belt here you'll see and you'll notice that the vacuum pump is no longer straddled on top of the engine here it's actually located somewhere else it was located inside the timing gear and this vacuum here Sorry, dodgy camera, right? So it's actually located in here, and this is the vacuum pump that goes to the servo. So they've, they've tidied up a few things. But what I'm interested in, now they've changed the sump. You you can see here, as we look at it here, so you can see, if I, yeah, so you see there's a sort of level bit, and then the sump is down the bottom there. If I put the camera down, it, you'd be, there you go. So there's the level bit and the sump, and you'll see that is quite different to the other engine here that's got an aluminium sump. Obviously it's still got the same front bit, but you'll see there you've got an aluminium sump. Now, I wanted to see what bits we could swap over from the two engines. And also there's a guy on eBay with new engines for sale, 2.5, but they were fitted in the Jeep as well. So I, I wanna have a look whether I could swap the bits onto the new engine. I'll put a picture of the new engine on the screen. So there we go, that is the 2.5 litre it come complete with turbo from a nice guy up in derby um it's all complete starter motor turbo everything and he was running that in a defender 110 so apparently it all goes we'll give it a go and i might take all the bits off that and bolt it on the new engine or i might go 200 tdi or i might go 300 tdi or i might go defender newer engines we, i don't know and i've done a spreadsheet of engines and i'll do a separate video on what the engine choices are you, for you if you've got a classic land rover defender or range rover classic with brake horsepower figures right but for now i need to take the ancillaries off this and look at the block formation and look whether i can buy the other engine new and bolt these bits onto it and then i'll have a new engine in the range rover classic it's an option Right, so we've got the 2.5 engine. I've taken the ancillaries other than the injector pump off. Um, I've started to take the heads off, but these bolts here on this one head, oddly, I've got this one bolt here and he's not coming undone. It's stripped, though. it's one of these with the internal, these M M14s. Um, and also that one there has also stripped oddly on this this one head cylinder number one so i'm gonna weld i don't know if i weld a bolt or a nut on there but let's get the welder on there and often the heat and the fact that i've got a decent grip should get that done but i can already see a couple of differences so i've got the the 2.4 there now interestingly on the 2.4 you've got this this bolt arrangement here but the the mounting, the adapter plate where it goes onto the gearbox, if you look on the 2.5, it comes down a lot lower. It comes, so the others are just here, but it's got this much bigger triangulation plate. Now, the problem obviously is, I think the two bolts here, the one here and the one here, were used for the engine mount on the 2.4. So if I'm gonna reuse my engine mount, I may have to keep that big adapter plate, but on this side, I'm going to have to use the mounting bracket off the 2.4. But let's get the cylinder heads off and look what they look like. Go, I've welded them. This one here is quite close to the injector pump, so I couldn't get all the way round. But he's looking all right. Um, and that one there, he's looking all right. So hopefully the heat will give a bit of thermal shock to the bolt, as well as the actual being a welder nut on. 
Right, 50% success rate. So, oddly, the one that I'd only managed to weld half the way round has come out. The other one, I actually sheared the top of the bolt. So, let me have a look. Maybe I can put a nut on <laughs> what's left of that thread. There you go. Always a challenge. Right, so let's have a look at our 2.5 engine. This is our third engine. So, we've got the original one. We've got a replacement 2.4. But are the heads cracked? Oh, yeah. That was where we just had to weld the bolts to get these out because the heads are drowned but we're all good now we're ready to have a look so let's have a look now i have marked them i put little dimples in in here i punched little dimples so i know which is head one two three and four so let's have a look all right I'm gonna... oh take my oh, look, i had to i sheared the bolt i had to weld another nut on but they come in the end all right, are the push rods gonna come or stay? The push rods are gonna stay. How are we looking, Kate? Oh, that's looking all right. That's all right, isn't it? That looks clean. We got no burn in there. Very nice. He's got a bit of, but he'll de we'll decoke him. We'll get that out. That's looking all right, right. And we'll clean up the bores in a minute and have a look. So he's, have a look if they've got any ridges at the top. Doesn't feel too bad, I'll clean that up. Right, here we go, number two. Fingers crossed. Oh. oh, he's all right too. He looks all right. He's got a little bit of deposit he build up around him, but he looks good. Two out of four. Two out of four. We'll take that. All right, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Number three. I'm not sure if any heads are more likely to go than others, no, but he's good. good. So you can see where they put this insert in the later heads. He all looks good. Is it gonna be four out of four? Four out of four. Ooh! Is there a, is there a start of a oh, tiny, no. tiny, I think it might be a slight, tiny, tiny one at the top there. But I think he'd probably be good enough to use. I'll clean him up. I think we're, we're, that's the best we've had so far, isn't it? And let's have a quick look. Oh, I've got my lucky blue roll here. Let's have a look what, what the bores are looking like and the pistons. I think I need to give them a proper clean, but I can't find, can't feel any. We'll probably need to deglaze them and I might pop, so I've bought myself an engine stand there. So we'll get it on the engine stand, we'll spin it round, we'll take the sump off and we'll have a, we'll have a look. But there we go, so, so far, this, this one, has this got a one, has this got a one-piece head gasket? Looks like it. Look, look, look. That's got a one-piece head gasket on it, rather than the four. That's interesting. I haven't seen that before. That seems a better idea. There we go. So whether that's whether that's an upgrade or a standard feature, I don't know, on the 2.5. But that looks a good idea. We'll have to investigate that. Right, we're getting on with the Range Rover Classic engine. So... We have cleaned it, we have painted it, we have taken the sump off, we have taken the pistons out, and we have deglazed the bore. So I thought I'd just show you. We've slapped a quick coat of blue paint on, just so that we can work on it in the end, in the car better. If it's painted, you can see it all. It's all a bit cleaner. So I just wanted to show you. This is a glaze busting tool I bought off eBay. It's quite good actually. It's relatively inexpensive. But you put this in. You've never seen glaze busting, have you, Kate? No. Right. I have a clue what it is. So these are. This is like carbide coating. So it's sort of like, sort of sandpaper, if you like, but a sort of stone. And then, oh, if you get it right, oh, hold on, I got it. I got this. All right. All right. And then what you do is you put it, and they spring out and press against the outside of the bore. And then if you. And what it does, it puts loads of little tiny scratches in the bore and cleans them all. And if we look in the bore, you can also see if there's any grooves. There's a couple, it's not too bad. So what I'll do is I'll just clean it up because you don't want any of the dust getting on the crankshaft. So you can see I've taken the big end bearings off. The crankshaft looks okay. These crankshaft journals at the end, they're not too pitted and scratched. Right, let's have a look at the pistons. So I have taken the four pistons out. As I took them out, I marked them. Oh, you can't see it there. I put some little 
You can you see four little dings in the bottom oh, yeah. there? Oh, just about. Just yeah. about. It might be easier to see. So I, I sent a punch them with little dings. Gosh, they're so rusty we can't see. Right. Um, the pistons don't look too bad. And I also took out one of the big end. So this is the big end bearings. And these don't look too bad. They're, they're kind of funky, these VM engine shells. I haven't taken that many engines apart. But they've got this sort of diagonal. The ones I've always taken apart have a flat mating face where the two parts of the big end join together. Right. Um, but you can see there's a bit of wear on this. You see where it should be the light grey. You see the dark grey. It's not too bad. So I bought some new shells. So we will change the shells. Again, it's just light wear, but there's no sign of any sort of dirt or gouging or anything too bad. So I'm going to clean these up, put that in. And also the, the small end bearings, they've got a bit of discoloration, but they're not too bad. And that's the gudgeon pin that goes in there. Whoop. And that looks, they look fine. I mean, it's a pretty big diameter. It's all pretty robust, really. So, and that's held in by this little sort of circlip here. So we'll reassemble. And there you go, you can have a look in there as well. Uh, they're not looking too bad. They look okay. Um, so we will reassemble, clean everything, swap these shells. I'll, I'll join you in a minute. I'll get the shells ready. And as I'm putting some shells in, you can watch me do that. All right, so you can normally get a little screwdriver in here and just pop the, the bearing shell out. Uh -huh. And then when you look at the back of the bearing shell, it'll tell you if they're oversized or standard. You can normally see... And you can probably just see on the bottom there, it says STD for standard. So that means it hasn't been been reboard or overboard. So we've got to get that super clean. Get all the... And then we've got to put the new shells in. Let me get this one out. Again, we should be able to get that just under there. And then just pop out. Right, let's get the the new shell. So these should be standard, does it say on it? Um, it says Alfa Romeo VM engine. They put this engine in the in various various cars. Alfa Romeo, oddly, was one of them, um, and the Rover and the Range Rover. Let me get some scissors. I'm just a little bit puzzled. We just got them out, and four of them are look different. I'm just wondering if they are. If one goes on the top and one goes on the bottom of each one, um, is the groove in the same place? The groove's in the same place, isn't it? Yeah. And they look the same sort of size. It's almost like these haven't been coated. It's like they haven't got the white metal on them. Hmm. Now, randomly, I did buy one set of these. Bought these off Rimmer Brothers. They said they had a hundred in stock, so I ordered four. One for each piston, um, but they only had one in stock, so it's not enough to rebuild one piston. So I went and bought a set of, now let me just see if these are shiny. No, you see, they're both the same, aren't they? Yeah. I mean, they are both the same part number and everything. So I have old King bearings mugged me off. It looks like these haven't had the white metal treatment. It looks like they're just an aluminium shell without the the sort of coating on it no i don't think i'm going to be fitting those disaster my plan scuppered right i've had to don the cone of shame it turns out i'm wrong i've learned something every day is a learning day so right this is very interesting so king bearings may well indeed be the king of bearings so um the the ones that i got um you can see this other one i got where i got just a pair the rover ones they're both got the same finish. Now, it's interesting. These ones have got a different finish, and I thought these ones were unfinished, but they're actually different materials with different properties. And actually, if you look really closely, if I get it the right way up, it's got 4501U, and the U is upper, and 4501L. So, upper and lower. And the reason is, when your piston is in the engine, your diesel, because it's diesel engine, compresses and exposed boof, then the force on the top of the piston is goes directly onto the crank and pushes the crank around 
whereas the other one just gets pulled up. So the forces on this top upper bearing are different from the forces on this lower bearing. So on performance engines, now this may be because it was the same engine fitted, the Alfa Romeo. So the, these have got different properties in terms of wear and friction and lifespan. So they've actually created different bearings that optimize the properties where one is getting a lot of thrust and the other one is just pulling up. So there we go. So we can get the engine rebuilt and get off to France. So let's just do this then. So that is a U, which is an upper. So you've got this little tag here. This is indeed our upper. And then that one should go in the little groove there. And that should, if we've got the right bearings, just sit in there nicely. There you go. And that should sit in there flush. That looks okay. We've got that in. Well, maybe move him to the side a bit. Okay, and we'll check that. Um, what we've also got to do is we've got to put this piston back on here. Now, I did. Now, it can go two ways. It can go this way or this way. Now, if you notice, this piston, this conrod, sorry, has got a flat end here. So, what I'm going to do is copy these others. So, it appears to have the flat end there. And if we look at the piston, it's got the little compression zone towards us. So, if I get this one with the compression little thing towards us, and then if I put that flat zone away from us there, we can then put the gudgeon pin. Come on, gudgeon pin. Ah, that's the side with the clip in. Oh, I do need the cone of shame today. That's what I'm when you work late and start early. Oh, there we go, that, that'll come through. There he comes. Catch that one. There you go. So that's all the way in now. And then I've just got to get this one to go into the little groove in there. Oh gosh, that's going to be quite a squeeze. There we go. He is in. He's all seated. So that gudgeon pin is not going to come out. So we've got that one already. We've got that shell in. Okay, and then we need the, so that one should be the lower. Let's double check. That is the lower and that goes in that section. Get it with the little cut out. Matching that one. That's it. And that one is all ready to reassemble. So what bearing is that? That one, as you can see, that one has got two dots. So that's our number two one. So we'll just leave that loosely assembled there. I'll get on and do these other two. And there we go, we've learned about different bearings. Right, we're now ready to put this into the car. So we've got our bearings, we've got upper and lower, we've worked that out. One thing I wanted to show you was, I've not come across this before either, on these big end caps, the cap should always, you should always keep it the same way it came off the car. But if you look at the way they've put these grooves in here, so yeah, when you feel here, there's no step when it's the correct way, which is like that. When it's the incorrect way, I'll do this again, it wasn't clear. Like there's clearly wrong. Um, and if I go to the next one, you can see there's a step here and on the other side. Now, interestingly, on this engine, just to note where you can see the tab there, the way they go together is the two tabs are on the same side. That's the way it goes together like that. Right, so I'm going to put that down for now. But when we look up in the engine, we'll be able to see the, the little tab side here. And in fact, as we do it, we'll, we'll note which way it goes. Now, the pistons can go in two ways. They can go in that way or that way. But on this VM engine, this cutout goes at the top here. So let me just have a look. So the, the little tab is at the bottom. So it will be at the bottom on all of them. So we can put that in. All right, we need to get it square. Right now, you'll see it goes down, but obviously we've got to compress the piston rings. I've checked all the piston rings are all good. Right, so what we're gonna do, we'll put a bit of oil around here, just, and then we'll get the piston ring compressor. Most of you guys have seen this, but for those that haven't, 
Um, so we put this over. Kate hasn't seen a piston ring compressor. No. We put that over and then we tighten this up. And what it does is it gets all those piston rings. I'm going to put a little bit of oil on this as well. Ooh. And it, it squeezes them all together. So where they're expanded like that, it squeezes them all. So we should be able to get it to pop down. Right, now that's getting there. There you go. Give it a bit of a massage. Right, I think. And then if we get the hammer and just gently tap it down. Let me see if I can just get that to go in. I'm just seeing where the... Yeah, he's okay at the bottom. Yeah, you can hear it going down. Now I've got to check it lines up at the bottom with the crank. Oh. Right, so we just rotated the crank a bit. Right, now that. I think that's nearly fully in there. There you go. Right, so that, when you get there, that pops off because it's all it's all in and then we've just gotta get the it'd be good if look at this engine crane's not the best it's right so i should be able to push that down now right. and that is come on with us have a just pass me the camera kate i'll have a look underneath so we should be able to see up under here now Ooh. you can see there that the the big ends all round there, the bearings in, and I can just bolt the shell on now. So that's how we put the pistons in. So I'll get that all assembled. I'll put a bit of oil on the bearing when I put it in there. It's head gasket time. They said to me, Simon, your head's not screwed on properly, but we're gonna try and sort that in this video. Right, so I've got two engines I'm trying to make one good one out of. One of them had individual, four individual head gaskets, and another one had one monster head gasket. I don't know which is best. I'm sure every VM engine veteran will have their preference. We're going to go for the singles. Right. So. Blue Hylamar. I love Blue Hylamar. Have you ever seen Blue Hylamar before, Kate? Okay. Not, I've seen not something you... It's sort of... It's not like a silicon. It's invented by Rolls-Royce. It's made under license from Rolls-Royce, apparently. Um, and they used it on the aeroplanes, I think. But it... Probably. It matches your engine. Engine, Heather. see? All fully coordinated. Look. It just helps. I think it lets the gasket slip a bit as it goes on. It's a gasket sealing compound. Oh, I don't want to get. It's a bit jelly like, isn't it? Yeah. Right. Right, I've got my two push rods in. Let me get this the right way up. There we go. One push rod through there. One through there. Right, and now the cylinder heads, when I took them off, I numbered them all. One, two, three, four. Oh, look, it stops it sliding. It should stay in place roughly there. Right, so I numbered them all. I put a little centre punch here. You see, I've got one dot there, so that was cylinder head number one. Now, number one, I've actually put number four on first. So this is actually number four. Let's go... Let's go with number four, because when you do an engine, it all starts at the front of the engine. One, two, three, four. So this is at the back of the engine. So let's have a look. I'm going to put a, put a bit on out. At least with four individual cylinder heads, I can lift the whole head. Normally, I'm not strong enough, Kate. <laughs> I can yeah. imagine it's quite weighty. Yeah, not that I'm not strong. <laughs> So yeah, all, so we've got no cracks in these heads. We've got all our, took me two engines to find four uncracked heads, well, three engines actually. Right, then we've got the push rods. We've got everything we need. Let's get those through the little hole in it. Right. We may have to loosen the tappets off a bit, but let's get some, ah, head bolts. We need some new head bolts. Right, now apparently they're stretch bolts. So I did order a new set of head bolts. I think that's, so apparently they do stretch. So you're only supposed to use them once, but I figured they were old already. So let's have a, I'm trying to work out which ones are long and short. That 
looks a bit long, doesn't it? Do, 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 do. Ah, look, yeah, because that's lower than that. So the long ones go in there, but he's got them out. So that was a long one. That's a short one. Oh, I know where the long ones go. I think those other ones go down the sides here. And we've got to get two little aluminium plates. But I'm going to get them on just with those. I'll get the four of them on with those first. I'll loosen the tappets off. So we'll get all four of those on. And then I'll come and put the the other ones that go in between here and clamp down. Right, so they are all on. Now, these bigger bolts actually have a spacer. And note we've got on the end here, we've got this sandwich plate. And the spacers, if you look at them, have got a little ridge. Now, there's actually three different types of spacer. If you come around this side, Kate, there's the middle ones, which is sort of an oval. And that's where it hasn't got any room. So it's a sort of oval elliptical shape. And then you've got the end one here, which is sort of half round and flat. And then this one where it's got no room, it's got a gentle curve. So you've got to work out where they all go. And then what you do is you put them, that groove there holds the sandwich plate. But if you fit it on one of these, you need to fit the little, it's not a groove, is it? A little up stand. You need to point that up. Otherwise it will dig into your cylinder head. There you go, so that's that one there. What have we got? We've got a narrow one we need in the middle there. Where's my narrow one? I had one narrow, narrow one left. What have I done with it? Yeah, what have I done with it? In my hand, that's when I lose my glasses, Kate. I'm like, where are my glasses? They're on your face. So that's that. And obviously you've got to make sure it, it sits like that. So we've got room to get the little rocker cover gaskets on. So I think that's all. Another thing is when you're putting these on, it does have a little clamp. I'm pretty sure it goes this side. There is a right way and a wrong way up. There you go. It's got the little hole there for the oil feed pipe. I think it was a while since I took it apart. I'm just trying to remember. But I think that's us done. Next job we got with just the tappets. Right, it's dark outside. I'm working on. But we've got the engine pretty much together. We've got the turbo on. We're just getting some sump gaskets cut on the laser. We've got the um, inlet manifold on. We've got the water pipe on. We've got the fuel injectors in. Um, it's all coming together pretty well. We've got the fuel pipes on, um, the thermostats on at the front, the oil filters all on. Um, so it's all starting to look okay. Get that sump on tomorrow, and then I think we're ready to go over to France and get it installed. Right, early morning start. We've got the Nissan, we've got the engine in the back. Didn't fancy putting the engine in the back of the Defender. So we got it all together last night. So it's all on. We got everything there. We adjusted the tappets, put the rocket cover on, connected up a few other things. We got all the spares. So it's now off to France. We got all sorts of bits and pieces. Let's go off to France and see if we can reunite the engine with the Range Rover Classic.